guys, we have a special guest visiting us at the tavern today. We have a member of one of the hottest factions in pro wrestling, Shane Taylor Promotions. You've seen him on Ring of Honor, the big bad kaiju O'Shea Edwards. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm I'm whipped, but I know like, you're beat. I know <laughs> you're beat. We got it. but we're pumped to have you here, man. We're excited to be able to talk to you. Glad you were able to stop by. Yeah, man. Now, what, how's how's the you know, you you you're whipped from the tapings, the Ring of Honor tapings. So how those Ring of Honor tapings been going, man? Man, they've been going great. Um, and you know, all things being considered, man, it's man, the talent on that roster, man, is second to none, man. You know, it's second to none. Those guys are out there, you know, busting it. Those guys are out there, like, you know, working, man. And so, like, you know, despite everything that's been going on, it, it, you know, it was a little bittersweet, but at the same time, it didn't detract from, like, why we're here. So everybody was like, yo, if this is going to be the last time everybody's going to see me, well, huh. <laughs> hey, man, then we're going to make it worth it, you know? So right. it was... You know, it was fun. I'm, I'm glad I, I was able to be a part of it. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things, man, it sucks it's going to be the last one. It hasn't really hit me yet. It'll probably hit me a little later. Right. Yeah. So what kind of kind of set the mood for us? Like, what was the kind of the atmosphere, the vibe of those last tapings? You said bittersweet and, and everyone wanted to, you know, bring their A game. What was what what was that bittersweet feeling like to you? Like, what was every how was everyone? Oh, Everybody was upbeat um, because it's still business. This is professional wrestling. So we're still going to remain to be professional. We're still going to, you know, do what we've been contracted to do and, and make sure we do it to the best of our abilities. Um, and, you know, we've been, we've been doing this for a while, especially during the pandemic. Everyone got together like real close. So it was one of those things of where like, look, man, for the past 18 months, we've been busting our ass. So, yo, man, at, okay, cool. It is what it is. There's no reason to sit there and just phone it in. Now we've gone this far. It's like, it's like running a hundred yard touchdown. And before you cross the goal line, you fumble the ball. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like we're, the job, the job's not done, but come final battle, the job will, will cross the goal line. So when, when ring of honor recently announced the hiatus to reimagine the company with a return tentatively scheduled for the spring, how did you hear about it? And when you first heard about it, like what went through your head? Uh, I heard about it on Twitter. That's I've how heard I found that. out. That's how I found out. I found <laughs> it on Twitter. Um, somebody had to send me a link and I'm like, what is this? And I read it. I was like, uh-uh. Oh, no. And so of course I have my own connect. So I'm like, yo, is this real? And it was like, were you on the call? I was like, no, man, I have a, you know, I have another job. I have to see me kind of maintain, you know, for whatever. It's like, no, I didn't. He's like, yeah, man, they're season operations. Everyone's a free agent, you know, go forth and do whatever and that first day man like i was in my feelings pretty hard like i was um sure i'm from atlanta so i moved up here two years ago like two and a half years ago it'll be three years in april to really like prove that i belong here you know i tried out ring of honor twice and once in 2016 and one in 2018 and then like within the span of five months man i sold my house quit my job and you know i got I had that job lined up but you know, I was like, no, I want to come. I want to train with the best because I want to be. I want to be considered one of the best when it's all said and done. And you know, with the pandemic, I got finally got a chance, like to you know, shoot my shot as it were, and I had the chance to really go out there and and show that you know, not only do I belong here, man, I was meant to be here, and things were going really well. You know, I, I was getting an opportunity to really do some really dope stuff, and you know, they were really high on like what I was bringing to the table. And then, like I said, then the next day, it's like, hey, by the way, uh bye <laughs> so it, it, it was just like huh um but the next day um i rebounded i realized what i realized the opportunity i was kind of placed in front of me um and realized the work that i've done was only a catapult to something else um so it was like if anything yo uh i got a nice solid uh you know 18 months i mean i saw the eight months of a highlight reel that I get to like, you know, actually longer than almost a year's worth of a highlight reel that I get to put out there now. Cool. Yeah. And now you can't say that I don't, I can't perform when the lights are brightest. Brother, I've been under some lights. You <laughs> right. know, I've been on yeah, TV. Right. I, I debuted on a pay-per-view. So, you know, you can't say that I, 
when the pressure's on, I can't produce. You, you can't say that when the pressure's on, I can't give you exactly what you need and then some. So, you know, like I said, I took it in stride. I understood what it was. But at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, man, cool. Let's just use this in as fuel to get somewhere else. No. So was there any clarity on their end for you guys of like, you know, we, if we come back, we will reach out to you or was it pretty much just, you know, we're ceasing right now. The contracts yeah. are open and yeah, pretty much just like, Hey, in April, you know, April, March, April, before we start putting everything for Supercon, I'm like, we'll be in touch. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. And for me, it's like, I don't believe anything until I see my name on it. So, yep. you know, so I'm just like, well, I guess this was it. <laughs> and, yeah. and you guys, I mean, Shane Taylor promotions, one of, one of the best factions right now. And Absolutely. you guys were just kind of like this unit that I felt like was, hadn't even really scratched the surface of what could really unfold. And so are you guys planning to move forward beyond the ROH banner as, as this, or is everyone kind of like every man for himself venturing out on their own or. Well, to, to be honest, man, um, SCP was never just a ring of honor thing. Ring right. of honor didn't make us right. Uh, yeah. I get that out there right now. We are not a ring of honor product to be completely honest. And honestly, I'm like, what are you going to do to me now? Like fire me. It doesn't really matter. Like they hedged bets against us. Right. They never thought we were going to work. So why, if you don't think something's going to work, they didn't put in the time or the money or that. No, we did it. We did it ourselves because we believed yeah. in ourselves. And my, old, my biggest thing is, yo, if I'm not going to drink my own Kool-Aid, I can't be mad if no one else is. Yeah. So, you know, we became the thing that we wanted to be because we were the ones like we were on, we were on the own machine behind it. We were the one doing it. Um, and up until recently, they realized, oh man, like <laughs> we are wrong. And all of us go, duh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're do we've done the work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like big ups to Shane, man, who really just. Yo, the man sees a vision and it takes a train to get him off like that vision. And then even still, like, don't count him out. Like, he may derail the train. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Moses and, and Khan, like, those guys, yo, those guys are going to be world champions. They right. are. Right. They are amazing yeah. as a tag team. They have such a a repertoire, such a, such a you know, a, a rat-a-tat with each other, man. It's just... Watching them move is great, and no matter who you put them in with, like they always deliver. You know, you got guys like Ron Hunt, who's out in the indie scene out in Pittsburgh and Ohio, who's just who's spreading the gospel. And then you have me, who just like, yo, I just get in where I fit in. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of works. And no matter what you need, there's five gentlemen who are ready to give you exactly what you need. Um, you need singles, we got you. You need doubles. I mean, tag team, we got you. Trios. Oh, you need an eight man? Oh, guess what? We could do that too. You know, and so for us, we were always bigger than Ring of Honor. Yeah. Not in a sense of like, you know, like Bullet Club or whatever. Right. But for us, it's like, no, man, like you, the only reason why you don't, you didn't like want to get with us is because like you didn't make us. We made, we made ourselves. And that triggers something for y'all because you remember the last time they let someone make themselves and what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, they didn't want to do that again. And that's cool. No big deal. But don't be mad when it's time to cast the checks. They have someone else's name on it. Right, right. I mean, I, I would personally love to see STP kind of rain havoc on some other promotions, but that's just me. Uh, they, know, they know the number. <laughs> yeah. how, how did you link up with those dudes you know shane and and moses and all those dudes how did you well, link with, up with join? with so back in 2018 i tried out with ring of honor and um in that camp they were there too and they were already established tag team in maryland um going like under the um, maryland championship the mcw banner that's produced like names right um and so they were some of the select few that actually from the dojo start getting on other shows and do this, that, and the other, and da, 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 da. Um, I came like a few months later, you know, because I was going to have to get everything stuff from me. Like, so I come in, like I'm the tail, I'm like the tail end of like the first class of the dojo at that, it, in the vault in the Baltimore area. Like, like I said, I didn't know anybody, um, <laughs> no family, no friends, just me. 
Um, so we kind of naturally gravitated to one another, but I still kind of let them do their own thing. It was whatever. Um, I was pretty big in the South at that point in time. So, um, like you, you know, you're trained three, four days a week, but like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was gone. Um, and that was always like, yo, where's O'Shea going? I was like, O'Shea's got to be in Tennessee, Atlanta, Florida, <laughs> you know, de- you know, wherever, like I had to go. I was constantly booked. Yeah. Um, Cause that's just how I felt. I just need to grind for myself. Um, and that like Shane got a caught wind of that. Like, okay, this kid's like really out here hustling, grinding, doing whatever, trying to like, you know, at this point in time, like I'm in DC, like trying to like take over like the DMV scene, you know, and he came to the dojo and just taught a class. And I think within like the first three sentences, I was like, homie, I'm in like, whatever you're selling, I'm in, you can sell me a timeshare and bulk of Raton right now. And I'm like, brother, <laughs> four of them, you know, like I, I was in, like, I bought in. I just, he, he's such a charismatic individual and he's so well-spoken and he's articulate and he knows exactly what he's saying and what he says is was exactly what he meant. Um, you can't help, but just like, yo, like talk to me, you know, like you are <laughs> yeah. the guy who I want to see on my TV screen when I was a little kid. Um, and he he really was big on that of like let's be the people that as a kid we always wanted to see, like why wouldn't you? Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so at the time out, you know, at this point in time, SCP started coming a thing with the trios and all that good stuff, and you know they start winning tag matches and they start winning six mans and like behind the scenes it's like hey man, just let you know like you're in, um, you're in STP, but for continuity purposes and all that good stuff like we'll give you the jacket we'll give you the shirt but like it has to be like a slow burn we want if the the minute you join we want this to be a big moment and so during some tapings we did it then and i loved it i i to this day i I just i still remember that day like it's the back of my hand it's no problem um and ever since then man we just we just been rolling rocking and rolling um i have a very um like marketable mindset yeah. so i'm always thinking about okay cool how can we expand how can we do this while well, within getting make sure everyone's on the same page so i come in now and i'm like yo boys let's start getting some a hey, unique hookups with these other indies down here in georgia yo here's this is who you talk to this is who you talk to this is who you talk to <laughs> like, oh you're trying to get some more bookings out in northeast cool this is who you talk to like you know let's get out there let's do this and you know there's a few places that brought us in as a group and it's been absolutely great like we've sold out bars and all that stuff in like Columbus, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. That's and awesome. then like within a few weeks, I mean, a few months, we go in Brooklyn, sell it on our, sell out an auditorium. Cause they came to see us and places going bananas. You know, we go to, we've been to um, Dallas together. Same thing. Like we go in there, we just sell out the joint and we're all kind of sitting there like, guys we're doing it for you <laughs> yeah, yeah. the work's been done you know um yeah but, we, but at the same time it's like hey man look i can't i can't teach somebody who doesn't want to be taught and i can't fill a container that's always closed right. so it was whatever we kind of kept it moving um but yeah man these in the short amount of time that i've been around them i have grown mentally physically personally and, and professionally like tenfold um i can only hope i've done this half as that for them um when all this stuff man happened they were the first people i talked to like are you are, are you guys okay is everyone yeah. cool does anybody need anything like what's up and everybody's like no nah, man we straight we've been straight we're going to be straight because we knew for a fact that we're going to didn't build us this was inevitable you know you this is also business we're in yeah it sucks but you prepare for this day unfortunately no matter how much you prepare when the day comes you're still never ready for it <laughs> yeah. um so um but being with shane has like i said has been the the best part uh the best thing i've ever done for my career yeah and that was going to be the next question is that you know how have you improved since joining stb um how i basically how i come at wrestling how i um my mindset in wrestling, how I um, develop my storytelling. And I love having all the other set of eyes because everybody watches wrestling differently. So now I'm getting a, a better wide eye view of why something might work another way. And for me, I love having my mind changed. Like, please change my mind about something. Just come just come with it, you know? And that's what they do. And that's what we always do. We'll sit down and watch matches two, three times and just break it down, break it down, break it down. Um, <laughs> You know, promo wise, we'll sit there and watch stuff, break it down, break it down, break it down. 
like almost we run like a football team. We run, yeah. we run like a football club. You know, we have take yeah. days. Everybody's in charge of their own physical, you know, stuff. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, boys, it's game time. Let's go. And then, you know, we'll take off a few days, come back. Hey, boys, anybody got any film? <laughs> Talk about it. The, the passion that he lose from those guys is infectious. Like, they love wrestling. They love being a part of wrestling. Like it, And finding people who love and is that passionate about wrestling as I am makes me feel good. It makes me feel welcome. It makes me feel wanted. It makes me feel like I belong. Like, I love those guys. That's awesome. I mean, you guys are getting high praise because I, I hear Bully Ray on Busted Open Radio always talk about like Ring of Honor doesn't know what they have with Shane Taylor promotions. Like those guys could be. And he the, nailed it. The biggest he act. He nailed it. He yeah. nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I love your Hanya Kaiju mask you come to the ring with. Yeah. I've heard you say it represents your guardian demon. Yeah. So what went into choosing that particular design? And can you talk about the initial maybe inspirations to make it a part of your on-screen persona? Right. Um, so my own thing is like uh, people always kind of like fight themselves. Right. You know, they're always like at war with themselves um for their very very odd reason you know either they're seeking the approval of somebody else or or whatever and then they care about what other people think i stopped caring what other people think yeah. i stopped seeking validity from people that mean nothing and all those little demons that kind of chit chat in the back of my head was like hey you just want to be on the same team so yeah man let's just be on the same team and yeah. so for me it's one of those things of like I said no one can ever beat me as much as I've always beaten myself. So there's nothing you're going to do to me that I haven't already done. Right. Um, but when you beat me, like when you fight me though, you're going to, you know, you're going to feel all my like bullshit. Like you're going to feel it. Um, it's one thing to like punch somebody, have them feel it. But it's one thing, like when I come to ring and you see it, you're like, right. yo, what is this dude on right now? Why is he, <laughs> his mind? Why is he walking so slow? What's happening right now? You know, um, I'm I'm emphatic for like the Japanese culture. I loved it. Like I have half my body's tattooed. With I love them. the painting behind yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, gonna say. Right? yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I got to spend some time there, like vacationing. Uh, of course, my ultimate mecca goal is to go wrestle. Of course not. Who would? Yeah. Um. But it's always been like it's a part. I've always kind of like taken that part with me, and um, like I said, that just kind of represents my, like, like the demon is not the one you need to be worried about right now. You right, know, right. you need to be worried about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that's always been like the thing. Um, you know, the the beads and all that good stuff is it's just more of just a a, a homage of just like I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener on a battlefield. So, like, you know, this is my peace. And unfortunately, sometimes for me to get peace, I have to choose violence. So I better make sure I'm very good at violence. That, that's awesome. I, I love all of the little things you, you've picked because, you know, as a very, very young kid, my dad would always pull up the old school Godzilla movies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, man, those are really the good. old ones, man. And when I ka kaiju, I was like, oh, this, yeah, this just hits in all the right spots. <laughs> it's like, mm, mm. But the tongue, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned just a second ago that you're from Atlanta. Big night for you guys last night, too, huh? Man, listen, listen, <laughs> let's go, Bravos, baby. <laughs> Woo, man, dude, it's been that a long is time. awesome. But I since race, 95, man. Ran late. I was racing home. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I am watching this. Don't talk to me right now. I got to <laughs> see my Braves win the World Series. And here's the thing. I'm not that big of a Braves fan, but I know how long that city has gone without a championship. Right. And yep. I was excited, not so much as, for the Braves, but just for Atlanta. My yeah. only, like, meh. Was like, man, I wish you guys could have won this in Atlanta. No kidding, yeah, man. They yeah. went to game when they went to game six. I was like, oh man, because oh, I knew they was gonna win game six. I'm like, man, you're gonna win it in Houston. Yeah, yeah. but I'm also a fan of Petty and the Washington <laughs> Nationals had the best tweet about it. And it goes, Hey Atlanta, congratulations. 
the Houston visiting locker room is a dope place to party. And I just went. <laughs> what a, 10 out uh, of 10 tweet. So good. That's Petty Murphy level. Right oh, there. I love it. <laughs> Petty Murphy <laughs> Bell. Yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, man. <laughs> so we're, we're big animal lovers here at the Tavern. And I see you post photos of your awesome dog, Tank, all the time. You got to tell us about Tank, man. Dude, Tank's up, uh, seven years old, man. He's um, a little old fat man. because <laughs> um, He's a boxer bulldog, man. I've had him since he was about like seven weeks old. Um, that's my dude. That's my best friend in the world. And right now he is struggling because <laughs> I've been gone all day. So, come on. Hey, come, here. come on. So this there is he my is. Man. This is him in all his glory. He's been up my butt all day since I walked in. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, this is my guy here, man. This this dude is just, yeah, he's spooled rotten, and it's my fault. I do it, you know. Um, there, but yeah, man, love this guy. He's been everywhere with me. There's nothing like there's nothing like a pet, man. Like your dog oh, man, is, is your best friend. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I did to get this guy. Like, dude, what did I do? Like, I got all <laughs> any dog, and I got you. That's awesome, man. So. Let's take it back a little bit. We'll go back. A, a, so what is your, what was your early wrestling fandom like? Like, have you always been a fan? And what was it like growing up as a fan? Yes. I was a diehard fan until I was about like maybe early 20s. Um, Cause it just got really corny. And I was like, yeah. This, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, I was like, Ugh. Uh, but first wrestling memory, I was eight years old. My dad took me the, the, the two times I've ever been to Madison Square Garden. Um, he, he took me, and it was a WWE house show. And I couldn't tell you who main evented that night, but I saw my favorite, at the time, my favorite wrestler in the world was Ahmed Johnson. And nice. I was see him, like, in the upper deck. And I'm eight years old, and I'm losing my mind. I'm like, yo, that dude is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> then I, like, now I watch, I'm like, yo, what the hell was I smoking when I said Ahmed Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> but at the, I was a fan, you know, and Pearl River Plunge, that was man. The best part. Yeah. I love the Monday Night Wars, man. I was a big WCW kid. I was oh, a big WCW kid. Same. That was awesome. Open Georgia. I mean, so yep. you, you saw him all the time, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, man, like you gave me that. I, I told people all the time, I was, hey, man, that first hour of Nitro can stand up against anything out today. Like, cause you had like the cruiserweights and then you got the, the TV title. I'm like, I'm telling you, man, that lower mid card. Oh you know, yeah. Cruiserweight, Lucha Leap. Yo, that's, that stands up, man. That's some yep. good stuff. Um, <laughs> and then like I said, after a while, I kind of fell off and got back in it, you know, r- quickly after that. Um, but man, I'm late to the game, dude. I didn't start training. I was 30. I'm 37. Um, so, um, I came to the game late and I'm, I'm glad I did. Cause someone's like, man, you know, you know where you could be if you had like 10 more years. And I'm like, nah, man, I was stupid. I was stupid when I was 20, you know, I was yeah. still stupid now. Um, <laughs> but like at 30, I was, you know, before I was a fireman, I was at that point in time, I was fireman for like 10 years. So I was a professional. Uh, I knew what it meant to be, you know, show up. Yeah, but I was also a, I was also a grown ass man at thirty, <laughs> you know. So wasn't anybody going to just treat me like a bitch? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I and I just kind of carried that with me, you know. So like I learned quick because people thought I was farther along than I was. I just didn't correct them, you know. Like, oh, you yeah. think I've been doing this long? <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Let's go with that, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but. Wrestling as a kid was great, man. I loved it. Um, mom hated it. Oh, she hated it. Um, <laughs> you know, Southern Baptist, man. It's like, what is this oh, yep. nonsense on my TV? <laughs> yeah, if she yeah. saw Leading Edge, she shoot me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, she shoot me. Um, but like um over the summer, I go to my dad's house in New York and he'd be like, What do you want to do this summer? And I was like, I just want to watch wrestling and I want to get a pay-per-view. And he was like, Cool. So we would either watch Summer Slam or Bash at the Beach. I can only pick one. So I would spend all summer wondering, what, which one do I want to watch today? Yeah. And, and me and my dad would just sit there and watch wrestling. And he'd be like, who's this? Oh, who's this? Oh, that's dude still wrestling? And I'm like, dad, you like wrestling? He goes, he kind of looked at me and goes, 
Yeah, I used to watch it back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that you guys had that to where you know he would ask you about it and you'd get to tell him about wrestling. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, yeah. That's fun, man. Me, me, and the way that's come full circle is the fact that like now that I've moved, I'm like three hours from my dad. I yeah. do a lot of wrestling in New York and New Jersey, and he like, hey, you wrestling this weekend? Like, yeah, where? Like, brother I'm in Queens. I'll be there. Yeah, like so awesome. my dad comes to watch me wrestle. It's the trippiest thing. It's, that's it's crazy, trippy, man. but I love it. He got to um, he got to watch me debut on uh, that, that before Dishonor. Um, well, that's I got awesome. Him a ticket. I didn't know he, he he said he wasn't sure if he's going to make it. Um, but so I got him a ticket anyway. And then one of the um PAs pulled me aside. Goes, hey, your dad's here. And I was like, how do you know my dad's here? I didn't. I never told you my dad's here. And he looked at me. He's like, nah. When he that dude walked in the door. We knew that was your dad. <laughs> I'm like, why? He's like, he, he's like, you look just like him. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. Um, what was that he, like, man? Me, he like, watch my biggest moment. And that, what, that felt what, really good. Yeah. What you know from from ordering Bash at the Beach or SummerSlam to having your pops watch you at ROH? What what was that like? It was emotional. I don't I don't keep a lot of like moments like that like to myself but man the the first time it my and damn it off my dad wrestling most if my dad wasn't part of both of them um so i got my first wrestlemania week booking i was so excited because i decided i was moving i was going to come up and join the dojo so i was going out with a bash and um it was white white eagle hall i can't remember i just know it was jersey um so I get picked to this big six man, you know, match, whatever. And sure enough, man, my dad was there and I was practicing the moonsault. Never did it yet, but he was practicing the moonsault like for months. I want to make sure I got it right. And uh, my dad was the first person to, to like watch. First, he got to see me wrestle live and then he was in the crowd to see me do the moonsault for the first time. That's and awesome. there's a small five second clip that I keep hitting away on my phone of uh, me doing it. Um, somebody's like, hey, man, I got the clip for you. I just want you to see him. Like, cool. But I wasn't looking for me is because I knew where my dad was sitting and I was looking for him. And you in that five second clip, when I complete the rotation and land, you see him in the back going, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I'm like, no, man, that's mine. This is mine. <laughs> and I refuse. I will never get rid of that thing. If I'm ever feeling bad, man, I just watch that. I'm like, all right, man, I'm feeling pretty good about myself now. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's man. awesome. Man. I love that. So what you trained under Robert Gibson, right? Yeah. What was that like, man? I mean, you're talking about a, a psychology <laughs> legend. Hoot. Hoot. The king of the hot tag, as we call it. <laughs> king of the hot tag. <laughs> um, man, it was wild. And, a, not, and not, I don't mean that in a negative connotation. Um, man, Robert loved wrestling. He did, yeah. man. He loved it. He loved teaching. He loved teaching. And so, man, he was like, okay, you want to learn how to wrestle? That's great. And I came, I, I was coming from another school. I came, I was coming there on a recommendation. I, it was, I was working at some other small little school, like in North Atlanta, but they, those guys were just kind of weekend warriors and just kind of goofing off. Some stay in shape, but I'm trying, I want to be for real. And when that instructor saw, I started taking for real. He's like, hey, man, you may want to go here. You need to go here. Yeah. I'll give you a recommendation. And so, like, Robert would train me for free. Um, because I came with a recommendation and, and at that time I was working like small little shows. Um, the first thing he ever did, we goes, Hey, um, lock up with me. That's the first day I met him. Like, Hey, what's going on? I, I know who you are. Come here, lock up with me. I was like, Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we lock up, you know, we kind of, you know, whatever he goes, okay, you'll do. And he just walks off and I'm like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> what <is> that? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then like, I, I, I have an athletic background. So um, for me, transitioning into wrestling was kind of easy, but my first, I guess, trainer, which is Johnny Swinger, he would um, like, he gave me like the basic building blocks, but man, there were some small blocks. Like I was just missing. And Robert filled in those small blocks. Like, you know, Cause his whole thing was, so you're trying to wrestle, you want to wrestle on TV. And I was like, I want to wrestle on TV. He's like, okay, cool. So let me show you how we, how we do it on TV. And ever since then, I was like, and sure. Like whatever you say, you know, and I would just go forth and you know, whatever, and this, that, and the other. And, you know, 
I take pride in saying that like I was trained by Robert Gibson. I, sure. I take pride of, you know, of being one of his few students who have actually like, you know, made that jump um, to something bigger because Robert hasn't been training that long. Maybe a few, maybe like maybe by that point in time, maybe less than 10 years, you yeah. know? Um, so he doesn't have a lot of kids that come through that. He's like, yes, it's this one. So yeah. I took, I take pride in being like one of his first class. I take pride in being like, you know, one of the, sure, out of that first class, not O'Shea's the one who went out there and made something, you know? Um, it was intense, like I said, for all the right reasons. It's the first time I ever worked a show more than 300 people. Yeah. Like being on his show alone, he drew 300 people. And by the end of it, he's drawn like five, 600 people and like a little armory. Right. Yeah. And at that time, the most people I've worked in front of in my life. Yeah. My, my butthole was that tight. <laughs> um, I was like, man, listen, do not screw up. And then I just got comfortable. You know, and Robert was able to talk me through this and talk me through that. And hey, as because we, I was a tag team at a time. He would, and of course, we wanted to be a tag team and get trained by Robert Gibson. Like, yeah. Um. So you know, we were just picking up all the stuff from him, and like I said, it was it was great because I would go off and do other stuff on the. You know, I do his show on Thursday. I'd be in Alabama on Friday. I'd be Jackson, Mississippi on a Saturday and then Nashville on a Sunday. And I'd be back at my desk to work Monday, bright as a daisy. Wow. You know, oh, um, fueled by nothing but just spite and caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> just spite, spite, pettiness, and caffeine. But I'll those shoot. were like most of my weeks. Um, brother, I loved them. I wouldn't trade them away for nothing. It, yeah. it taught me such a, a work ethic to just, yo, man, wrestling doesn't owe you shit it will ask you for everything and the minute that you think you've given enough no nope, it's gonna want more yeah how bad you want it and that's what the whole thing like how bad you want it cool yeah. go get it and you know i'm going back home soon i'm not telling anybody when because some, for some people's a surprise yeah um i can't wait to get back there and then just like just walk through the door like What's going on, gang? <laughs> What's yeah. Yeah. Long time no see. I'll tell you, if anybody's going to teach work ethic, it's the, the Rock and Roll Express boys. That, yeah. I saw them. I saw Robert posted a picture of him and Ricky on a plane heading somewhere yeah. to work a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Like, to, to see that they're still working. I mean, you can see, like, I'm a big fan of them. I got them. They're yeah. on the wall here, man. Like, that's my one of my favorites ever. So, yeah. You know, their work ethic is. When, when I left, he. He he always called me Peanut. I don't know why. I, I honestly I was too scared to ask. Um, <laughs> he called me Peanut. He goes Peanut. I heard you're leaving, and I'm like, Yeah, man. I got invited to train at the dojo now. He's like, Cool. Congratulations. Do me a favor. I'm like, Yes or anything. Do not embarrass me. You got it. And I knew at that point in time that was about as close as a compliment I was ever going to get from Robert. Um, until I saw him like maybe eleven months later. And we were touring Ring of Honor. We were in Atlanta. And he was on the show. And he sees me because I'm help setting in the ring. And he goes, Peanut, well, I haven't even haven't gotten any phone calls about you embarrassing me yet. So there's that. And I'm like, oh, I stand corrected. That's the closest I'll ever get to a Robert Gibson compliment ever. Sweet. Now I know. Um, but, you know, if I, if I call him, he picks up. If I text him, he answers. You know, so... I like the relationship I have with, with, with Robert. Yeah, that's awesome. Now it's it's funny when you look back on your journey to where you're where you're at now, and you see those people like you know Johnny Swinger, and then then Robert Gibson kind of fills those holes in, and you meet the dudes in STP, and you draw from them. Is there anyone else that we're missing in this journey that you look back at? as kind of a pivotal teacher to get, to get you to where you're at in pro wrestling. Yeah. 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 Oh, most definitely. Oh man. You're, we're going deep cuts today, man. Hell yeah. I love <laughs> it. I love it, man. That's a great question, dude. Oh, snap. I love that. Um, murder one, murder once NWA, uh, George, murder one, man. Love him. Um, he, he, he got me a little hip on more of the indie stuff. Of what wrestling, hey man, this is what wrestling is going to get to, man. You know, right. the 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 eighty four Memphis is great. You know what I'm saying? But if you try, if you're trying to work some stuff, 
this basic murder was the one talking, hey man, this is how we get dirty. <laughs> this is what we do. The, you know, this isn't the hey man, let's work a headlock for you know 12 minutes in Tuscaloosa and go home. Yeah. It's like, no, man, let me teach you how he basically murder was the one who it's like, hey man, let me teach you how, how we do it on independence. Let me teach you how to run. Let me teach you how to do all the stuff that you're gonna need to know when these shows start calling you. And so he ran his like underground wrestling school, and that's what it was. It was just really all the <laughs> quote unquote indie riffic stuff yeah. <laughs> that at the time. <laughs> I knew, but I never understood. He made me understand. He let he showed me how to understand it. Um, so you know, murder, murder one most definitely. And then only reason I really can't say I look back on these because I'm still in contact with them, right, like, right, constantly. Um, when I when I have something creative that I can't quite like hasn't quite solidified yet, I call Shug D. Yeah. We may not like each other like too much, but we know if one of us calls the other, pick up. So <laughs> yeah, right. But like creatively, when I have something creative, I'm like, hey man, I trust your on your I trust your premise, your unbiased and honest opinion. This is what I'm thinking. Blah, 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 blah. And then he breaks it down. And he has no problem telling me no, that's not a good idea. Cool. Thank you. Now yeah. at the end of the day, if I physical cool idea, I'm still gonna go do it, but I can't say I never asked anybody. Right. You know, um, he's been the one that I really, I really talk to on a more consistent basis. You know, he's been places where I want to go and I'm at places he wants to go right. and so on and so forth. So we're always like, Hey, I know you've been here. What do you think about this? Hey, I know you've been here. What do you think about this? And so, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's one of those where, when I first came up, Shug was my idol. Like I looked up to him, but now like, I feel like I'm, I feel like we're just rivals now, Yeah. but I know I can still call him about stuff and he'll, he'll answer me honestly. That's awesome. So when you're having, this is, this is off topic. I'm, 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 I'm going completely off. Dude, topic. let's go. Come on. Let's get it in. <laughs> when you're having sushi, are you a wasabi man or no wasabi with your sushi rolls? I get, because I get the low sodium um, soy sauce, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll take well, I'll take a big dab of wasabi, put in the soy sauce, mix it up. That's the move. And That's the move. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, oh yeah, always wasabi. I'm not a big fan of dry wasabi. That's why I'm like, ah, man, give me some soy sauce on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's some of your like passions? Just you know, sh shit hanging out at the house that has nothing to do with wrestling. Like, what? Yeah. How do you unwind? Um, dude, big gamer, big gamer. Um, Xbox, Xbox, you know, Series X. I got PS Five. I just bought a laptop, so I'm trying to get into that. You know, whatever. Um, but I'm a dude, so yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm a big big sports guy. Love the Ravens. Love the Ravens. Oh my god, big Ravens fan. Big Georgia Bulldogs fan big Georgia Bulldogs fan, I, I, but we're not, I'm not going to jinx it. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to jinx it because, you know, it's not going to say anything because I'm a big Bulldogs fan. That's all I need to yeah. say. <laughs> but I say something, going to lose every game. Um, And then I'm, I'm just not getting into hockey. Just not getting into hockey. I've been to like two Capitals games, but like now that Seattle has a team, I kind of want to root for them Um, because I think that, I think Seattle Kraken is the dopest name. Oh, it's, it's great. Yeah, it, it is great. You know, Um, but like, I love to write. Um, And then I don't, I, I'm, I am not musical, but I love to listen to music. Oh yeah. Um, And it's one of those things of where I'll put on like YouTube and just go down whatever rabbit hole that I can find. Cause who knows when we come up, who knows where I end up. Um, But like lately I've been on this real big, like, Sa like soundtrack kick but like almost like real epic movies and they have like this big orchestra type like soundtrack like oh, i'm yeah. in for those man i do not know why i love them so much yeah um <laughs> so what uh what kind of movies movie soundtrack like what are some of these scores that you're okay um, driving on? i think that interstellar had a beautiful soundtrack it really did um 
of course, because I've been a nerd and I kept looking. Apparently, every movie that Hans Zimmer ever does, he picks out an instrument. And that's the singular thing where the orchestra surrounds around the instrument. So he was saying for Interstellar, they were like, what haven't we done? He was like, we never used an organ before. And I just went. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I now I now I listen to that soundtrack again, and it's complete. It sounds completely different to me because oh, I know what I'm listening for. Yeah, he's incredible. I, I love his score he did for uh, the Dark Knight. Yes, where, I started watching those movies again just for the music. Yeah, the way he the way he did that. I think he ran like a violin bow over a bass guitar or something to every time the Joker would come into the screen. To this. And it would build. I love that stuff. Yeah, I'm a I love, big, big music. Music, uh, music to add to tension. I'm like, ooh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What I, I'm also I write screenplays and short stories and stuff. So what do you, what what do you write? Same thing. I was writing like I would write my own promo scripts sometimes, and then promptly forget them. So I'm like, <laughs> so I just do it off the cuff. Um, I did a bunch of creative writing um, when I was in college, um, because honestly, I'm a theater kid. I'm a dumb, Same, man. I'm Same. a. I'm a um, in high school, I was in the football team. So, but I took theater as an elective. But I, I only couldn't find it. I was really good at it. The only thing is, I can never be a part of any plays because <laughs> football. You know, yeah. hey man, I got football. It's like, well, we're doing Othello. We think you're really good for it. I can't. I got a football game. I, I just I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. um, but to get into like theater two and on and so on, you had to be invited. You know, not just because you pass the class. It, pretty much you had to show some aptitude of like theatrics. And I got invited. And I started to say, you don't want to take theater too, do you? And I'm like, yeah, if I'm invited, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, it's harder plays. I'm, I, that's why I learned about the um, the Shakespearean play format. I was like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah. For me, the play was great. But now I want to like, all right, let's break this thing down. Like, how do I tell a proper story? Um, yeah. If I knew that, you know. 12 years from now like hey buddy i'm gonna need this like it's gonna be kind of important um i call you a liar i'm like i'm just doing this because it's fun which kind of goes back to wrestling i'm having fun man i'm having so yeah. much all right so what's one thing right now with the modern pro wrestling what's one thing you love about it and what's one thing you think it's lacking it's almost it's almost an oxymoron it's the when shit gets real. When you start blurring the lines of a shoot and a work. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, you know, that lack of realism is what I love and is also what's lacking. I understand we have characters and I and I get that and you know, so on and so forth, but like, yo, get me invested. Why do I care? Um and so it's like, you know, once again, I, how about I just become the change that I want to see? So like my stuff's real. You know, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, hey, man, listen, I'm going to beat your ass because I have to, you know, yeah. not because I want to. It's because this is what I have to do. And you ain't got to like it, but it's coming. Um, yeah, like I like I love that sense of realism that like, yo, what it, you like if you can't once again, if I don't start drinking my own Kool-Aid, I can't be mad if no one else does. Yeah, right. I would love. I'm not saying everything's got to be super serious. Like it's whatever. We need a palate cleanser. Like it's no big deal. But I'm like, yo, where is the? Like, there's a moment in time where like NXT was like, re, you, you felt it. Yep. Especially, yeah. Especially with, I played this for Gargano and Ciampa. Like you felt it. You're like, oof. Like that was coming from a place of hurt. You know. Like I need. Where are those stories? Yeah. I want. I want those stories. Those are the stories that I like. That I really kind of. Uh, sink into because those type of stories is what gets you like Eddie Kingston promos. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like those, you find out real quick, like who somebody is when they pour their heart out, you know, but some people want to take themselves too seriously or pe some people don't take themselves too seriously enough. And like, for me, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, this is awesome. But like, this isn't what I'm here for. Like, give me the realest dudes in the room. Like, oh, yeah. Those are the ones I, those are the ones I want to see. I'm, I love realism when it gets me. I've watched wrestling for over 30 years. Right. I love the stories when it gets me scratching my head. Like, do these guys really have beef? <laughs> you know, like yeah. that, that's yeah, what like, uh, pulls me in. This seems personal. Yeah. These, yeah. these boys yeah. are coming in a snug, you know, <laughs> but, it, but like I said, it gives you, it gives you moments. 
like that's what I like creating are the moments where the match is just like just a pleasant dessert. You've already been fed. Right. The the match. Thanks, bud. Come on, man. <laughs> um all right, buddy. Uh, hey man. I'm talking to friends. <laughs> you know, okay, we'll go outside and show out. So <laughs> what what's the you know with ROH and everything going on with that and what's your immediate goals over the next six months to a year? Like, what are you looking at? What What's going through your head right now with everything? You want the, like the petty answer. You can give us both. <laughs> In the next six months, Honestly, I got something to prove. Yep. I'm going to show y'all like that. I mean, y'all, you guys fucked up, man. You're really fucked up. I'm going to show you why you fucked up. Yep. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't like to be, I don't like to be overlooked like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially when it's out of ignorance, like you knew what you had, you knew yep. what you had. Okay, cool. You, you'd rather, um, Conan said it, you'd rather lose money and not deal with me then make money with me. Fine. Watch this. I'll just make all of it then. You know, no big deal. Um, but from a professional standpoint, I want to, I just, I want to keep doing what I've been doing. Like my, my November is full. My November, my December is full. My, my January, February is getting full. You know, yep. I, I wanted to be a part of something bigger than me. I didn't need it. So when it was all said and done, I'm like, I'm going to be okay. I got to be, you know, this isn't it for me. Um, so I've been making moves since whatever. So for me, I'm like, all right, cool. This is one less move. I can't, I can't make this move anymore. So I got to start making other moves. So um, only only difference is is now, um, like I said, I got an eight month, you know, highlight reel to show wow. that I, I can perform. That's awesome, man. We look forward to it. Yeah, we'd like to see some O'Shea Edwards down here in West Virginia, man. Yeah, where where? At? West Virginia. Do the most Virginia all the time. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, real shoot. Real shoot wrestling. I'm at West Virginia all the time. Okay. Well, we're gonna be we're yeah, gonna there, be visiting. There's a, there's a promotion in Charleston, Conquest. Yeah. There hey, goes. Conquest, if you're watching, dude, call me, man. I'm trying <laughs> to work for y'all. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So we have one final question that we Maybe always ask. All right. So you're making towns. You okay. have any three wrestlers alive or dead to be making those towns with you who's in that car Ooh. <laughs> that's dirty i only get a car i don't get a van <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you want to get a van we can put some in a van we can right. do it of all time dead or alive yep all right i'm gonna fill up a I'm gonna fill up a Tahoe so I get five. <laughs> okay, go for it. I get five myself, like two in the front, two in the back, one in that bench. See, we're gonna be fine. Okay. I'm well. I'm bringing the rock. Yep. Bring the rock. Bring the rock. Hell yeah. Um. Oh man, this is gonna be tough. I'm bringing a. Uh, I'm bringing a. Uh, Ricky Stingboat. Oh. Okay. I'm bringing Ricky Stingboat. Um. I got two more. Oof. Damn. I'm bringing Eddie Guerrero. Oh. I'm going to bring Eddie Guerrero. Oh, I got one more. Oh, man. This is going to kill me. This is going to kill me. I got one more. <laughs> oh, boys. This is this sucks. <laughs> I don't like this question anymore. <laughs> Cause I'm in the car. Like, what do I have? What do I need? Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No. No. Yo, I'm bringing Kevin Nash. Oh. Oh, man, that's a stacked ass car right, right there. I right. It. I could have went so many different ways, man. Oh I was yeah. Going Bob Backlund. Um, I, I was thinking about uh, 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 bringing Owen Hart. You know. Yeah. But yeah. I was trying to figure out, like, yo, okay, what can I? I was like, okay, I can play both ways. The Rock can be a face or him. I was like, Steamboat's always a baby face. You know, <laughs> all, all the baby face, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I was in my head hard. There was a, there was some thinking going on by that one. It's a tough question, man. <laughs> yeah, oh. man. Oh, because there's, there's not enough. There's, you oh, don't, you'll yeah. never have enough space. No, never. 
No, when you throw the alive or dead aspect in, yeah, you're just like, oh. damn. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of that question becomes a whole lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, tell everybody where they can find O'Shea Edwards. Tell them, plug all your shit, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so my, you want you? I like to interact with people. The engagement's fun for me. You know, just don't be stupid. Um, you can find me on um Twitter at at um Big Bad Kaiju B I G B A D K A I G U. Um, you can find me under that same name on Instagram, just a period after every word. Um, merch makes the world go round, folks. Come on, man. It's how I eat, it's how I feed my fat dog. Um, <laughs> um it's whatamaneuver.net. Um, and just search O'Shea Edwards, man. All my new designs are up, all old designs are up that like I don't keep on the table anymore. So if you get one of those shirts, you, I tell you what, you wear one of my first shirts and come find me. I'll give you one of my new shirts. Um, Ooh, that's a yeah, deal. Man. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I like I like to support my, as much as my day one support me, I want to make sure I support my day ones. So if you have the very first shirt that I ever released on One of Maneuver, and here's the thing, I know which one it is, because and they're not in order. Um, like, <laughs> if you wear that shirt, I don't care how you got it, but if you wear that, the first shirt I ever made, and you show it to, you wear it to a show, I will give you for free one of my free shirts without even asking the question. I'll just give you a big old dap. I'm like, my man, there's a day one. Right there. <laughs> That's awesome, That's awesome man. man. That is amazing. Well, man, we appreciate you stopping by. We had a we blast, had a man. Blast talking awesome. to you. you. I mean, anytime you want to come on and talk some wrestling, man, we're always here. Ah, right, trust me, man. We'll be in touch soon. You better believe. It. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, we appreciate it. You have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, boys. Appreciate you.